Word of Truth, 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 Truth. Kingdom Ministries presents. The power of words. Word, word. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to the Word of Truth Kingdom Ministries. John Mark, the servant of the Lord, of course, is my name. And of course, I just want to welcome you to part two of the The Power of Word. 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 All right, now I hope that part one increased or at least refreshed your knowledge and awareness of how words do have the power to help or to hurt you and I'm, I'm saying this on a spiritual level so today we'll continue from where we left off from last week to explore the countless ways that we are living in a world that has no shortage of spiritual traps to keep people in spiritual bondage while the prisoners themselves who are in this bondage usually remain completely clueless to the true reason for the struggles that they endure through their life. So please enjoy this special (laughs) spiritual meal as you partake of it and it's served to you hot and fresh, yeah? Um, these, These spiritual meals are full of spiritual truth And since we know that Proverbs chapter 12 verse 19 tells us that truthful words will stand the test of time, but that one day every lie will be seen for what it is, we need to stand on the side of truth. Amen? So let's please continue to dig deep to build our foundation on His word for the word of truth is a spiritual truth rather than a natural one so yes let us do all that we can to present ourselves to god as his creation and let us be worthy of his approval and that we would be void of any reason to be ashamed so that we will be able to position ourselves to correctly teach the word of truth 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 (laughs) So yeah, so um, let's just please continue to examine ourselves so that we will be able to minimize and hopefully just to remove any possibility of deceiving ourselves. Amen. Amen. And so just want to invite the Lord as usual so that he can take his rightful place, lead, guide and direct us in this process that we would learn from his word as we are in the world so we just pray heavenly father we just thank you lord for this day that you have made lord we do not take for granted all that you are teaching us and leading us and guiding us to learn um, through your word and through this world lord we just ask that your mercy and grace would be heavily upon us and that the holy spirit would guide us and to be the uh the advocate that we ever so much need to stand by our side and to really kind of be like a tour guide through this world, Lord. For we are in this world, but your word tells us that we're not of it. But because of our natural carnal condition, the natural side of us is so conditioned by this world. So, Lord, we need you. We desperately need you to help us that we would break away from this conditioning, that we would get out of the cycle that we have been wound up in um, because of our forefather, Adam. So, Lord, we just ask that you would just truly help us to be set free so that we will be able to see all of these traps, all of the, the subtle images and symbols and all of these ways that we are kind of being drawn away from you, Lord. Help us, please, for we cannot actually even come to you unless you call us. And 
it is a challenge to come towards you because the enemy is always setting up hurdles, roadblocks, and many ways to try to stop us from coming towards you. So, Lord, we desperately need your help. So continue, Lord, to please open the eyes of your servants, the spiritual eyes, that is. And, Lord, that we would also have our spiritual minds, that we would gain knowledge, that we would not perish, but that we would gain the knowledge that is necessary to move forward. This we continue to pray in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen and amen. All right. So last week, once again, we did begin the mini series by observing passages like James chapter 3, verse 2, which of course tells us that those who learn to control their tongue are considered to be mature and perfect and able to control their whole body. While we also looked at Proverbs 13, 3, which tells us that the one who guards his mouth, which is really to guard their thinking before they speak, that person protects their life. And the one who opens their lips wide and chatters without thinking comes to ruin. Ouch. Now, Proverbs 18, 21, which is our main passage for this series, and one of my favorites, which we all know says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it and indulge in it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. That, of course, is the Amplified, but according to the King James Version, it says, that they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. <laughs> and of course, we also took a pit stop at Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 and 37, whereas the Lord was telling us that our words will eventually justify us and acquit us of the guilt of sin. But at the same time, if our words are not carefully used, then our words will condemn and sentence us of the guilt of sin. Um, the last one that I recall us we did look at was Jeremiah 18, 18. And this was the case whereas Jeremiah's enemies, they were saying that they wanted to strike him with their tongues, which was to use their words, not their hands. They they knew that it was very effective to slander him and to speak horribly about him rather than having to lift even one finger. So we need to really focus and remember just how powerful words can be. Amen. So that is obviously necessary because we're living in a world that actually approves of speaking ungodly words and promotes and trains and conditions the process of having everyone speak worldly words rather than godly words. And we all want to say the right thing, but the issue is we have been conditioned and trained to say the wrong things. Amen? Actually, that's more of an ouch than an amen. So this is because of the fact that Satan knows that God's quoted word has the ability to overthrow and to cancel his demonic words, his worldly words that he ever so desperately wants us to speak. So his main goal is to defile our minds so that we lack the knowledge and faith to speak God's words. And this ultimately helps us to progress in life. So one of Satan's main tools is subtle distraction. He knows that if he puts a big massive distraction in our way, it may cause us to have our alarms really kind of go off and then we wouldn't go. But when he brings in a subtle distraction, just a little something, something, he knows that there's a better chance that we may not really kind of say, hey, something's wrong there. We, we might notice it, but we may not do anything about it because it's not a massive issue. And so um, just this week, I was even, kind of, it just kind of came to me the term that distraction is the enemy of progress that came into my mind and that's exactly what is happening how satan wants to lead us away from progressing in the lord 
and that saying uh, it's very very profound very deep and if you allow it to really just sink in you will acknowledge just how profound it actually is so we really need to knowledge and acknowledge that we must overcome distraction amen uh, we must overcome manipulation amen and all other forms of demonic hindrances and control tactics and devices that the enemy has set in place in this world so please remember that hosea chapter 4 verse 6 warns us that god's people perish for lack of knowledge so we really need to remember that it's a really important passage and we know that the enemy does use these subtle ways to mislead god's people and so uh, last week we focused more on the foods but now we're going to be looking at other areas like you know sometimes um it could be a demonic image or symbol that is actually being presented to us um and symbols and, and images they represent words so you don't have to see um words all the time if you see symbols and images that represent words like green amber and red colors in traffic lights i would think that everybody knows that those mean go slow down and stop respectively um so sometimes we can be initiated into these occultic groups and be completely oblivious to it because we see these images and these symbols but we don't know what the true root meaning of it is and so we will be told one thing but it will actually mean something else so um in in in, in his book um manly hall that is in his book called the secret teachings of all ages this was in 1928 a man named manly hall who obviously was a occultist uh, he was a 33 degree scottish freemason and a philosopher and he basically said that symbols are obvious to those who know the meanings but remain a mystery to the ignorant majority who lack the knowledge and understanding to interpret them that's deep so if anyone truly decides to investigate um secret societies and hidden religions and occults and you know within civilizations that person would eventually learn to understand that you know symbols they really go deep and we must first understand the origins of certain symbols and signs and you know and whatnot and by the special grace of god we will eventually get to explore that at some time but truly it won't be easy because such information is extremely hard to find because it's really only available to members of these hidden occults and religions so you know without the lord helping us you kind of would just be you know like chasing a parked car you won't get anywhere but with the help of the holy spirit we definitely could get insight and wisdom and knowledge on that amen so by his grace at some point in time we will be able to get to that point um i truly would like for all of you to even get a chance to go to truth and edited his youtube channel you can actually watch his playlist called the symbols explained and he has several different videos detailing how many symbols are used in the world today that the masses are completely asleep to they're completely ignorant to it due to the conditioning the mental conditioning that we've been kind of groomed under so um, that's definitely something that uh, i would recommend um, everybody to go and watch yeah um, most of the world most of the world thinks quote unquote thinks that they understand the symbols that they use however the true meaning of a lot of the symbols and signs that we do see and use most of them are evil 
And even though they've been presented as harmless most of the time or friendly, it, what it does is it leads us who have been told that it's harmless and friendly, it leads us to actually promote these things on a regular basis. And of course, the issue is that we lack the knowledge that we are actually promoting and endorsing evil. And this obviously is what we need to stop. So today, we are going to go through several everyday pictures of advertisements and just things that I've come across over the last six or so years. I just want to expose how it is very common for most societies in the world to blatantly promote evil as if it was good or godly. We have to remember Satan has been called the god of this world and that really he's kind of gotten control over this world except for those who have been saved by the precious blood that gives them strength from day to day and gives them the ability to overcome the enemy by the word of their testimony and by the precious blood of the lamb and by the you know and by the fact that they don't love their life so much that they're you know wanting to hold on to their life above defending the truth of the word of god so truly this is a really good place for us to be at and i just want to say once again God said in Hosea 4, 6, that my people lack, they perish for lack of knowledge. So we do not want to lack knowledge. We need knowledge in order to move forward so that we do not perish. Amen. Um, so yeah, so the purpose of displaying and briefly discussing these pics, uh, pictures as, uh, as we reveal them is to kind of expose how there is a heavy form of subliminal words, images, symbols, and suggestions to really control the multitudes. Uh, really, I'd say the entire world. And it's done in so many ways, but I just want to kind of address these and call them what they are, which is open doors. And um, that's just what we'll be looking at is open doors. I'm reminded right now that uh, the, the scriptures do speak about open doors, but not so much in depth in this way. But I'm also reminded about the book um, by Dr. Rebecca Brown called He Came to Set the Captives Free. It was either that one or Prepare for War, but one of them had a chapter on open doors, if I do remember correctly. Um, so yeah, so an open door is exactly what it sounds like. It's an entry point or an exit point for someone to kind of, you know, enter or exit a place or a location. But in this case, that location or place is us, our minds. The enemy wants to get into us. And, you know, I recall that, I think it was last year, the year before, I saw uh, a little um, video on how our minds are created in a way that when our eyes see something anything that we watch it's as if we are actually there and this is why even movies are so effective because when you watch a movie it moves you as if you're there and that's why whether it's a funny movie or a horror movie but especially horror movies horror movies tend to make a person believe on some level that what they're watching is real and then they'll kind of go home and when the lights turn off they'll be thinking that the monster that they saw in the movie is there in the room and I, I, I think that on some level your consciousness or your subconsciousness kind of does bring them so it is dangerous so we truly need to um, be mindful of the things that we do allow into our minds and our thoughts. And so as we will see these name brands and logos on food, clothing, any product anywhere in the world, um, we need to kind of keep in mind that these images or logos 
that are attached to these products, they are often actually a form of a possible spiritual door for some kind of good or bad spiritual activity. And usually it's bad spiritual activity. So when we wear clothing with certain images or names on it, it is a possible open door. Whereas when we eat food that has certain labels on it, it is a possible open door. Or even when we listen to certain music or watch certain movies or TV shows or even documentaries, even then I fully believe that it is a possible open door. So basically, anything in the world that we observe by way of our eyes, ears, our, and our mouth, or even sometimes just by touch, anything that we observe that does not come from God is more than likely coming from the enemy and therefore is a possible open door that has been set up by Satan himself or through his demons. And so when it comes to these things, it doesn't have to be uh, to the point where as there's a visual or an open change in your life right there and then like, boom, no, it doesn't really work like that. Usually it gives an effect that happens over time. So it will affect the way we think and reason and ultimately it affects our decision making over time. It's like it wears us down. It waters us down. And this happens usually subconsciously beyond the level of us really acknowledging what's going on. So we really have to be on point with this and acknowledge it. Um, I'm just reminded of a 1988 movie um, called They Live. If you've never heard of it, try to go to um, Netflix or somewhere to go and watch it. Uh, the movie is about like a drifter who was the late pro wrestler Rowdy Roddy Piper. He finds a box of sunglasses that just so happened to be in a church behind a wall, hidden under the stairs. And when he gets these things and he find, kind of gets himself by himself, he opens the box, sees it's just a bunch of glasses. He thinks ah, that's kind of, you know, that's not much. But as he's walking down the street and he puts the glasses on, he realizes that everywhere that he looks he is kind of seeing subliminal messages that actually replaces the normal messages that we would see like if he looks up at a billboard it might say obey or you know um stay asleep or you know this or that but there are subliminal messages that when he puts on the glasses he's able to see these messages whereas without the glasses he's not able to see anything except for the advertisement that's being placed there and it even allows him to see some so-called which i would say are demons but he sees the reality of some people of what they really look like which in the movie they kind of just look like a skeleton face um, rather than a normal face so the people who are normal they still look normal with the glasses on but the people with that are not normal you can clearly see that they are not human <laughs> they look like you know just some kind of um skeletor something like that but yeah it's on netflix please find it watch it uh it's a good educational um, film for this purpose just to show how malevolent forces are controlling society um, and there's so many other movies that are like this because really in this world that we're living in filmmakers they often blatantly show us non-fiction by turning it into fiction they want us to believe that it's all oh, it's just great fantasy and it's make-believe but no no go so the stuff is real so let's just keep those things in mind anyway as we move forward i just want to make it clear that we cannot avoid these open doors they are everywhere in the world and so if it's a case where we can't 
do anything about it to get it out of the way, we need to pray and ask the Lord to help us. But the number one thing is we have to be aware of these open doors, which easily could be in an advertisement. So we'll be looking at those. Um, and if we acknowledge it, then we can choose to reject it openly with our mouth and, you know, um, coming from within us we can reject it but as long as we acknowledge it and we're not in a position to kind of maybe reject it or cancel it then at least we can ask the lord to help us if it's an open door that we can close on our own amen so yeah so for the purpose of this message um i've actually grouped these pictures because there's a lot of pictures i've grouped them into five different categories and um, all of these, I believe, if you look at it on some level, I believe there's some kind of point of contact. Some are very subtle that you might not even think anything of it, but I do firmly believe that it's, it's an abundance of all of these little things that are conditioning and leading us away from the Lord. Amen. Imagine if we lived in a world where television programs and music and everything was actually um, kind of a reflection of what the Bible has to say. We know that this world would be so much different if the world was actually fully following what the Bible says. Oh, wow, what a thought. So, once again, our job is to recognize these open doors or points of contact and then avoid them if possible and to pray for protection against them if it's not possible to avoid them or to remove them, amen? So these five categories are one, number one, in no specific order, is entertainment programming. That's what I've titled it, entertainment programming. And we'll go into that. Number two topic and category is improper doctrine. And we'll go into that. Number three is the triangle plus the eye. The, the all-seeing eye, that one eye. Um, number four is ungodly images. Uh, and number five is witchcraft conditioning. Um, really, there could have been other titles as well, but I just wanted to kind of go into these because of the fact that it's kind of just like a basic breakdown. So many of these pictures, um, they, they easily could even overlap into some of the other pictures. So just keep in mind that uh, I will kind of speak on them. Um, and hopefully I'll remember when, you know, it might be in one category, but it easily could have been in another one or two or three different categories because sometimes they do overlap. So we're just going to go through those now. And yeah, we just ask the Lord to help us along the way. Amen. Amen. All right. So. The first category that we're looking at, of course, is the entertainment programming. And of course, this is titled this way because the entertainment industry has so much influence on the world that when they put out movies, television, um, music, whatever it may be, they have the one of the strongest abilities to influence a society simply by the content that they put out they're basically teaching people how to think what to think when to think you know how to kind of deal with situations they do that in a very ungodly fashion and so this is programming <clears throat> so the first one that we're looking at is this movie called greed i believe this came out last year and if you've noticed there on the right side, it says the devil is in the retail. Hmm. Now we know the saying, the devil's in the detail or in the fine print and all of that. But this, I think, is just kind of reflecting on this movie, which is based on a real person who was, I think, in the, um, in the, the retail industry. And he was like, super super rich and whatever had happened in his life you see in the reflection of this guy's shades there's this nice big speedboat or whatever um but yeah it's just basically showing the fact that this life is his life was privileged and he was greedy 
and it's being glorified and that is not good so rather than we have a movie put out to kind of glorify god and his kingdom and his loving kindness for us we're actually looking at something like this guy with saying you know yeah well you know if i'm greedy then maybe i can have all that he has as well and so it does subliminally teach people to want that which is not good now let's move on matilda <laughs> for any of you that is familiar with this character matilda which is actually based on a children's movie about a young girl who goes to school she has a very unpleasant teacher and she encounters bullies and people who are just mean and then she discovers that she has powers and she uses her powers to do good she's using witchcraft to do good which is kind of like no that doesn't work out so unfortunately we live in a world whereas the enemy will almost often choose to attack the minds of the youth first because if he can defile a, a child's mind then he knows that that child will most likely grow up to have a defiled adult mind whereas if somebody is rooted in the word of god from since they're young then the enemy doesn't really have a chance to come in when they're older so he knows his best mode of attack is to get them when they're young really young as young as possible and there's many many evidences to show that that is very true um but yeah we we all kind of know that so this whole series and movie and anything to do with matilda please don't allow your children or anyone else's children that you're aware of to actually watch these things um then we have you know other children like i said he always attacks the children so you have this image here of um the movie farmageddon which is placed on the side of a bus which obviously kind of links biblical topics to a farm with farm animals and i haven't seen this movie but i am more than certain that if anybody was to watch this they would see subliminal message that relate to the bible but not in a biblical or godly way so this is just another area that we are kind of being conditioned and bamboozled and trained into the wrong thing as we move on now of course most people will be aware of this image on the left side of the guy's face which is venom and uh, the right side i would believe that would probably be eddie brock he was the main person in the spider-man series that the alien force which fully i say is a demon the alien force that when peter parker was finally able to get rid of it because he himself said that it was changing him and it was making him turn basically bad when he got rid of that alien force it found its next victim who happened to be in at least most comics a guy named eddie brock and eddie brock was a career criminal bad man so he easily welcomed venom and so this is kind of showing it's just it's just profound how deep the picture actually really is so we see that now as we move forward we go on to more entertainment programming we clearly know that the bible speaks against homosexuality but here we have the whole title of this movie, Disobedience. And look at what it says. Love is an act of defiance. Disobedience. And this is actually promoting it that people should be able to live however they want to live. And unfortunately, people are misled to believe that, yeah, I mean, on a natural level, you're allowed to choose whatever you want but there's a there's a saying that says um you can choose the sin but you cannot choose the consequence so if people say well you know i'm allowed to do whatever i want with my life they're right but when their life comes to an end on earth and they end up in hell 
then they're like, please give me one more chance. I'm, 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 I'm you know, I'm, I'll change, I'll do better. But no, we have a chance while we're here on earth. So we have to really recognize these things for what they are. And then we move on. More images of the entertainment programming. I'll never forget the first time I saw this and I just looked at it and I was thinking, why does that guy look so pretty like he's a girl? I mean, this is a theme that's been going on for a long time that Satan has wanted to make men more feminine. So this guy is looking really pretty in his picture. And those two rings he has on, I would assume that those two rings are, you know, not godly. They, they symbolize something. Um, but yeah, it's just when, I, I don't know. When I see this picture, I just think there's something to it. Um, and even his fame, I believe his fame is a result of him being a world success. Not according to God, but definitely according to the world. He's a great singer. But I don't know. There's, I just always saw this and I said, nah, something ain't right. So I wanted to share that. So we just proceed. We move on. Then there's this movie. Once again, entertainment programming. I've never seen it. I only saw this ad. I didn't really like, realize that it was even a movie until I kind of saw the, the name Zendaya. And I kind of had to kind of look it up on IMDb, which is the international movie database um I had to kind of look at it but look at the slogan how far would you go to feel something so this movie is actually directly kind of pouring out and reaching out to the to the to, to the senses the natural senses which is talking about you know and the movie is actually i had to look it up it, it's a look at a, a group of high school students that are grappling with issues on drugs, sex, and violence. And it's just like, wow, massive wow. Um, euphoria is the experience of pleasure or excitement and intense feelings of well being and happiness. <laughs> uh, certain natural rewards and social activities, such as aerobic exercise and laughter and listening who are making music and dancing can induce a state of euphoria. So we know that we are in the flesh, but we're not of it. We're in the world, but we're not of it. One of the greatest tragedies that we are victimized by as a human being is the fact that we are led by our feeling. So this ad is asking us, how far will you go to feel something? Oh, it's it's drawing us away from the spiritual side of who we are and drawing us to the natural side of who we are. We must beware of these things. Amen. So we continue. We have just, just to kind of go over a couple others that are just blatant. You know, The Walking Dead, It, Get Out. All of these are horror movies. And it's telling us that it's frightfully good. So it's promoting that it is good to watch horror movies. And we have the right to do so. But we have to understand that we are opening up doors for unclean spirits to come into our life and to stay because we've let them in. We need to understand that for what it is. Hmm. Now this one here. Huh. We dance to your tune. When I saw this, it just I just saw it as, you know, this is definitely some form of demon. It's not normal. Why is there a stuffed animal bouncing on the bed? Why couldn't they use the image of a child to be bouncing on the bed? Now, have you noticed that the company, if the company's name is Eve, Eve Sleep, so Eve, you see there, the enemy will always refer to the Bible and use things that are biblical because he knows that it will draw people towards it. So we have this, not a child, 
but a stuffed animal that happens to be bouncing on the bed having a great time dancing to whatever tune so if we allow our minds to say hey that's so cute look at this little cute little stuffed animal bouncing on the bed that's not possible that's not realistic hmm. subliminal messages with people subliminal messages we need to beware so now we move on to this one mythic quest i don't know very much about it but i had to kind of look it up and obviously i i when i learned was that it's just, it's about a owner of a successful video game uh that he designs this game called um Myth, mythic quest and it's a hit it, it's a big hit and whatever but his team of people within the company they're all kind of in their own little way having their own little struggles so the the show is i guess it's about trying to keep everything together and trying to keep their 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 actual game on the top um, but when i seen it the first time i was thinking hmm with this girl in front she's holding a shovel clearly something or someone had to be dug and put into the ground because why else is she having a shovel why else and it just it just screams that something is wrong in this picture to me i can't put my finger fully on it but the the vulture uh just the the, the smirk on the girl's face there with the glasses I just you know there's just I just see that it's just just another image that is drawing people away from God through entertainment and that's not good so we really need to be mindful of these things and lastly uh, this I saw this um, ad for this show called Temple which was in Temple train station in London and even this, I don't know anything about. I had to look it up. And apparently he was a surgeon or something like that. And his wife was dying. And in order to keep his wife alive, he was doing underground operations for criminals and people that would just pay him straight cash to try to save his wife. So he was trying to do a good thing, but doing it in a very bad way. And that's what's being promoted in our world. So once again, we need to be aware of these things. So, um, lastly, we have this that I saw in another train station. And when I saw it, I was just thinking, mm, I don't even need to speak too much about it. You just look at it and it might look innocent, but there, it's not innocent. It's definitely not innocent, especially with this black boy in the middle with his tattoos on his forehead and under his eye and just the way how it it might be two different people's faces merged into one or it's just showing the difference of this guy's life on the left and the right i don't know but it's not there's just something not right about it so when i see these things and i don't know if you realize but rock and roll looking at the picture on the left uh hosier or whatever rock and roll that is satan's music and then we have on the right, the girl with Dazzle. She's got on her dazzling trousers and it's just, it looks like you're being dazzled to go shopping and it just has nothing to do with God. And this is what I want us to recognize. It has nothing to do with God. So what is the real purpose? What's the foundation of this thing? So um as we we continue to look at these things i just hope that you're seeing the point of what it is i'm saying so now we're going to talk about improper doctrine improper doctrine now this is a heavy one as well because when i looked at this and i saw this ad in the train station i couldn't believe it and it's on netflix i don't know if it's still there i obviously would never read it but when i saw it i was very disturbed by it i want to tear it down obviously i'm probably getting in trouble for doing that but that's what i want to do so you see that in this it's showing it's the one picture on the left side obviously they're trying to say that it portrays jesus because the show is called messiah and on the left they're asking will he convert you and on the right he's actually handcuffed to a table wearing 
a red jumpsuit. I remember when I looked at it wasn't orange, it was a red jumpsuit. And you can see that there's like complete darkness behind him and it's asking, will he con you? So they're using a play on words. Will he convert you or will he con you? And this is the message that they're giving about the Messiah. So if you haven't watched it, please don't watch it. Please don't watch it. This is the demonic kind of conditioning and, and indoctrinate that we are actually being taught and told. And it's so wrong. It's so improper. And it wasn't just this one. I also then seen one day minding my own business and there I seen it this ad join our con congregation this isn't even the messiah show this is another one but they're using that word con again and so the show I can see is called the righteous gemstones but they're clearly showing that these are con men and con women who probably have a church, they probably have a massive following of people, and they're probably influencing people to the fact that they are conning them. You can see the way this guy's face is tilted to the side, he's rubbing his hands, and he's giving you that smirk look like, would you like to be conned as well? Come to my service. I mean, I don't know if people realize it, but Satan, he has a church as well. Hmm. So. When we see improper doctrine, we have to look at it and say to ourselves, this is an open door for me to come into it and then to partake in it. Reject it. Don't do it. Don't go watch these things. Don't let your curiosity get the best of you. I'm certain that there's probably so many people that have watched the show Lucifer, which just blows my mind because I'm not talking about worldly people. I'm talking about Christians who have probably watched the show Lucifer out of curiosity. I don't know what it is, but they shouldn't be watching it. And that's the bottom line. So there's so much improper doctrine in the world. And this directly, especially this in the Messiah, it's blaspheme. And if you don't know what the scripture says about blaspheme, go look it up because it's not good. It's the one thing that can get you put out of the mercy of God and without any return so please be mindful now this one um, I had to go and do something for my wife a few months ago and I saw this ad up on the wall and I was just like what I have to take a picture now I know that it may not be so easy to read but it, what it says there is don't do what you are told so obviously they're kind of portraying it as if they're saying to do what you're told but then here's the rebellion don't do what you're told now even the image of the monkey i think that in itself is a subliminal message because you, we know that monkeys are often used as test animals for doing certain things well humans are used as test test subjects as well and so the scripture tells us to do things, but it's saying, don't do what you're told. Rebel, do whatever you want. That's not good. We have to be mindful of these things. So we proceed. This one was also very disturbing for me. This is all, this was all over London. I don't think it's being advertised as much now, but it was. And as you can see, it says, I'm confused. I reject that in Jesus' name. Every time I saw that, I was just like, I'm not going to confess that I'm confused. But this ad is getting people to say that they're confused. I can't even see what is so confusing about this girl in the picture. But the picture is there to get people to confess and to say with their mouth that they are confused. And if they read the license plate on the vehicle right beside her, behind her, it too says the same thing on the registration plate so these are just more subtle ways that society is getting people to declare things that are ungodly 
and they are open doors for the spirit of confusion in this case to come in and to confuse your life so when we see things like this we must reject it amen we must reject it let us proceed more improper doctrine this one when i saw it in the train station i was just like no way because the first thing you'd read is not the fine print you read that big massive sign that says up yours <laughs> oh. but then you read it again it says mel's just upped her plans this summer up yours <laughs> and then on the bottom they travel up i mean it's so unnecessary so unnecessary even i don't fully understand why he is looking so much shorter or smaller than her but he's definitely got more weight and size than her and she's above him looking down and it's just the whole title up yours it's just so improper and this is teaching people to go around laughing saying up yours i just i just got my plan i, I pushed my plan up so up yours <laughs> I mean, that's just so wrong. It's so wrong. Oh dear. Now, this one here, this easily could have been listed with the witchcraft category, but I put it here just because it is also just, it's very improper doctrine. It's teaching, once again, the children, teaching them uh, in the way that they should not go. But this is what is teaching them. And of course, it's, presented to you by harry potter so it's actually showing that you could go online to that link please don't do it and it will teach you how to build a wand how to learn to code and how to make magic now we can all say to ourselves oh but that's just make believe it's just fun you can deceive yourself into saying that but it is not just that it is real and if you follow some of these things, it is an open door for whatever to kind of take place. So we must reject these things, not accept them. Moving forward, this picture when I seen it, I just thought, you know what? There's something very wrong with this picture. I can't put my foot, my finger on it, but I do know that when I see the name Klarna, I'm always thinking it's karma, but they're just using a play on words and just trying to be um, you know creative with it but when I look at that picture if you look at it as well it really baffles me the person on the right I'm convinced that that is a man looking like a woman and you have the dogs that actually resemble the two people but there's just something not right about this and it's just improper doctrine that is kind of getting people to think this is okay they're sitting on the bed with these two dogs they're grooming the dogs to look like them and i don't know it's just it don't it don't sit right at all so these are just more things that we are actually being we're seeing every single day and it's not good so we move forward more tv shows the hills the affair the mindy project all of these are talking about adultery and you know just things that are completely improper according to the word of god and so when we are constantly being bombarded by images like this all the time if we're not truly protecting our mind we will eventually be like oh well let me just see that and see what it's about or anything can draw us to it we might be a female that says oh that guy's so hot let me just watch it just because he's hot or in most cases it's a male and they they'll put it this picture perfect woman with showing you know her, her breasts and so much skin and then the male will just watch it not because he's interested but just because of the female and then it turns around and says can't stop watching we have to reject that in Jesus name because we can stop watching and I haven't even started watching these so please join me don't watch <laughs> in Yeshua name don't watch so we go forward 
uh, more improper doctrine. Joining the betting rebellion. We should not be rebelling to, to God in these cases. We should be drawn closer to him. Now, this once again may seem innocent, but the reality is that if you have this rebellion of betting, where does it stop? Because when you train your mind to rebel in one area, it can easily start to seep into other areas and cause you to rebel ultimately against God because that's what the enemy's angle is. So we have to keep those things in mind. <sighs> More on children. To believe in flights of fantasy. I've seen I've seen these ads for a long time, never watched any of these two shows or movies or whatever they may be, but I believe um, To Train Your Dragon was a movie, never watched it, because it's like, why would I just automatically watch that? I can clearly see it's demonic. And then the other one, the GOT or God or whatever that is, same thing. Now, this also could have been put in the triangle and the eyes uh, category, because the signage that they have for Believe in Flights of Fantasy, it's a triangle. Why does it need to be a triangle? I don't know. Other than the fact that there's a subliminal message there. So these are things that, once again, we would look at it and probably not think twice, but we should. Because I believe that there's something there. It's not promoting God. It's not originating from God. So it's pretty simple, like I said last week. If you miss heaven, you cannot miss hell. If you miss God, you can't miss Satan. So we need to keep these things in mind. The uh, Just to wrap up on these improper doctrines, just looking at this once again, huh, playing the lottery is definitely not something that I believe a Christian, a believer should be doing because it's gambling. And we shouldn't do that because the spirit of gambling can easily start to take over and cause you to go in directions that you don't want to go but it's portrayed that oh look at the great time she's having she's clapping she's enjoying it she obviously must have just won the, the the happy face smile over the national lottery is crossing his fingers which is also not of god i mean there's just so much levels so many levels of how it's improper doctrine teaching people now we move forward to this is an actual invitation to coming to the University of Hertfordshire. And when I saw the picture of this guy's face, I was thinking, nah, something's not right. <laughs> Destination unknown, but they've decided to scratch out the un. I mean, it's to be creative, that's what it's there for. But even when I look at his face, I'm convinced this guy's got on makeup, lipstick, and he's made to look very feminine, very pretty. And that's all I'm gonna say. So we just have to be aware that these things are there to really water down our, our guard, our security system within our mind. And if we allow it to, that's exactly what it will do. So now we're gonna go on to the um, category of the triangle and the eye. This is definitely something that easily is all over the place and we often don't really take notice of it. Uh, this is here says the rebellion, re rebelling, once again, rebelling never felt so easy. So last time it was rebelling for one area, but now we have, now it's the rental rebellion. So we, we got to kind of keep these things in mind that it's that theme of rebelling that is being kind of pushed on us. Now, look at when you read what it says there in the yellow. Renting a home is way more fun and much less faff. I had to laugh when I just kind of saw that that same word was used because it just reminded me of the stick Snickers, the faffer. So this may be just a term that's used more in the UK than it is in uh, North America. So um, it says, yeah, much, much, much less faff 
and there's no deposit to pay, no fees, and your all your bills are included. But the bottom line is they're trying to tell you that renting a home is way more fun than owning one. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Who can try to actually say and with a straight face that renting a home is way more fun than owning a home? It's not fun. You're, you're, you're p- putting in money into something that's never really yours. You're putting money in somebody else's pocket. You're not leaving yourself a legacy or a future for yourself or your, your children's children. You're putting that into somebody else's children's children. So no, renting a home is not supposed to be fun. You're not supposed to be looking at it as, oh, this has never been so easy and enjoying yourself in the bathtub, enjoying that you're renting and that at any point in time, the homeowner can come and say, sorry, but you got to go. <laughs> but I've been here for 30 years. Yeah, but you got to go now. <laughs> you could take them to court, but the bottom line is you're renting. You don't own it. So we need to be aware. But the, the main thing was, did you notice the triangle there under TP? <laughs> I almost forgot to mention that. That triangle is there not by accident but that is the symbol the image that they're using to represent their company that triangle and the triangle really which has the three sides it's a counterfeit of god the father the son and the holy spirit but we know that satan uses the triangle for demonic means so we have to be aware of that so let's look at this other image here It's not a perfect triangle, but it is a triangle. You see the image of the eye in the middle. This person has that on the back of their knapsack. So they're carrying it around wherever they are. And I fully believe that that is an open door that obviously could be allowing certain things to happen in that person's life, even though they would probably say no. But I fully believe that that is the case. Then we have Charlie's Angels. You can see clearly that the three of them are standing in front of a triangle and it's the three of them. So the positioning of the three of them, if you see the triangle of where their heads are positioned, and then there's the actual triangle behind them. Now they're using the word angels. Now the actual Greek, the the root word for the word angel is a messenger. So we don't know who really Charlie is. Is Charlie some good person? Is he a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ? I don't think so. So when we see these things, we have to still kind of bear in mind that the root of it is not good. We continue on. Here's another image that is kind of just like how we saw in the Charlie's Angels image had the two triangles really one was upside down one was right side up this one it actually is the same hakasan so if you look closely you'll notice that there's the normal triangle that is there um, merged with the upside down triangle and then a straight line going through it the image and everything they've made obviously it serves a purpose though we may not fully know it So we move on. Now you see the Adidas symbol. It also is shaped in a triangle. Um, From what I remember a long time ago, Adidas didn't always do this symbol, but sometimes they did. But it's the fact that it's in the shape of a triangle. Now, right beside it, the Caribou or Carib, I can't remember what it's called, but that has that the Baphomet, it's the Baphomet head. So once again, the person's wearing it on their clothing, thinking nothing of it. But I don't think that that's actually spiritually healthy for them. I'm just saying. So we move forward. We have here the Pink Floyd exhibition. Um, clearly, you can see the triangle and the shining eye in the middle or the shining light. And Pink Floyd, if you're not aware of who they are, they are a heavy metal band from the 80s and clearly they serve satan enough said next (laughs) now we have this one here um i've never actually watched it i've just seen the ad on the train and i say you know what clearly there's a triangle right there 
and that woman's face in the middle is to kind of represent that eye but you see how her hands are stretched out to kind of be like the base for the triangle and then the four people around her are kind of the slopes the slants the other two sides of the triangle it's there it's not always going to be blatant in your face but it is definitely there you need to be mindful of these things and the way not to enter into that open door is by not watching these things because it draws you because it says comedians giving lectures well for people that want to have a laugh they will then want to go and check that every wednesday at 10 p.m looking for a laugh not knowing they're being indoctrinated into improper teaching through satanic forces it's not good now this one when i seen it i was like wow <laughs> had to stop and take a picture of it as you can see it is the picture of a woman she's in mid-air i don't know if she's going up or if she's coming down but i do know that half of her is the bottom half is human and the top half of her is actual crows birds black birds and they're coming out of her as if maybe they're going into her so maybe she's turning into a human or into the birds we don't know but we do know that that is on altar bridge and i believe this actually might even be for a group a music uh, a band or something like that but altar bridge is the theme that they're using and walk the sky hmm. if you even look at the lining of where the water is once again you can see the two different triangles where the ground is the dark ground you can see that it forms a triangle and then where the word walk the sky is and you look above it where the all the white light is in the sky it forms a triangle so you have the bottom one which is just like the last picture is the base and then you have the inverted upside down triangle there as well these are just more very subtle ways that evil is being promoted so um we just want to keep all this in mind yeah all right so now we move forward going on to the next and we have once again none other but a triangle this time the triangle's in a circle and this was in a shopping mall that i was at maybe a year or two ago and i just seen i said let me just take a quick picture because clearly i'm not going into that stored shop because that's what they're representing <sighs> now looking at this next picture it's almost exactly the same this woman wearing a harry potter knapsack and you can see the triangle and the circle in the triangle all these symbolism they mean things and the straight line now remember in the charlie's no not the charlie's angels the the hakasan it had as i was saying the the triangle that kind of goes up and down and then had that straight line through it but in this case that straight line i believe is a wand so clearly harry potter dabbles in witchcraft and all that kind of stuff not good now this picture here i seen it when i was working in a hotel and i remember i seen it, was, it was, honestly it was like the picture was talking to me letting me know that that demonic presence owned that area that floor and i looked at it and i said yo i rebuke you in the mighty name of yeshua and then i just didn't want to be in that area of that actual hotel because i was like nah man this thing's looking at me and i'm not i'm not liking it because i was feeling it so this is just another thing that definitely comes against us that we need to be aware of next <laughs> this tree i don't know this looks like it could be a art um maybe a performer or whatever celine i don't know if that's Celine dion i don't think so but all i know is this guy's leaning on the tree or coming into the tree or coming out of the tree i don't know but the tree all those thick branches they kind of form an upside down triangle when you look at the shape whoever took the picture they knew what they were doing this wasn't by accident it wasn't random they took that picture and they they knew what they were doing basically 
So these are just more examples of what we have to look at. Now, now we're moving on to the ungodly images, which I'm just going to kind of go through them because within every city, but definitely here in London, there's lots of images within the buildings that it's kind of like, it kind of speaks to like there's um, ancient forces that are kind of watching over that building or that area now this i took it when i was still working at four seasons hotel and it's way up in the building and i'll never forget it because on the other side i thought i had a picture of it as well but the other side has like a picture who looks like neptune and he's holding a triton in his hand as opposed to this one's just holding a whatever staff but the, they're holding something in their hand which clearly I was like no man this this stuff is looking like it's supposed to be innocent but I don't believe that for one moment and so when you look at some of these other images you see people's actual faces I don't know who they represent sometimes it's animals but in this one you see a person's head like a statue of a person's head which is actually hovering over a uh, which to me looks like a mirror mirror on the wall so you have that over that and it's like i don't fully understand these things because i haven't spent too too much time studying them too much but i fully believe that the basis of what i'm saying is on point that you have these images that are just really demonic um you see there again same thing these things are all over the place and so i'm firmly convinced that when somebody sees this the way to cover yourself is you acknowledge it and you cover yourself with the precious blood of yeshua if you have to enter into that building or just even being in that area cover yourself because if you're not covering yourself there may be some spiritual power that is maybe causing some kind of interference in your life you just don't know so don't be reactive be proactive if you see these things just be on the safe side and ask the lord to give you insight discernment and to cover you yeah um these ones i also seen um when i was in the london area and i was just like wow these images it's like people are dressing up like demons unfortunately i couldn't get a good angle to get a good picture of it because it was during this daytime and it was really sunny and I and the reflection really prevented me from getting a bit better picture taken but you can clearly see that they're wearing abstract uniforms and there's no words it's just these abstract uniforms and as you can see in the bottom of the picture people are walking underneath it and I was just like no man that just that's just so demonic so you kind of see here's another angle that I tried to take, which is actually with different pictures, but they're just more demonic images that people are actually going around. Now, when you see the image right there in the front, that's actually for Herod's. Now, Herod's is a very high end um, store, department store that you can go in and buy things. And Herod is promoting this female that looks like she's just oozing of i don't know ungodly things and i don't know it's just we have to acknowledge that things are much more than what we can see with our natural eyes so now once again i uh, the same hotel that i was working in that had the image of that woman's face on the wall this was the same hotel that i was in and i saw this guy walk in and he's got this skull and bones with this snake oozing its way in and out of the head and i was just like wow no surrender huh <laughs> then of course we just move on another one skull and bones people love to have the images of skulls all over the place whether it's on rings or tattoos or wherever people really gravitate to that and i don't think they truly realize just how harmful it is so we just kind of want to keep these things in mind so we see these images that are just definitely have influence and we need to be aware of it um when we mark up and tattoo our skin uh this one is you know v for vendetta but you're putting that mark on you because you like it but there's a spiritual attachment to that 
whether the person acknowledges it or not. So now our final thing, our final category is witchcraft. And witchcraft, I believe, is, is very, very serious in the way that we're being indoctrinated in things. And as you can see, there is like a sorcerer. This person is sitting, I guess, maybe on the top of the hill or in a tree. But clearly, they're conjuring up some kind of power, some source, some light. And I don't know what they're doing with it, but it's definitely not good. Now, look at this other picture. Now, I don't know if it's supposed to be the same person or maybe that's their enemy that they're going against, but they're clearly using some kind of sorcery and some lightning powers coming from their hands to do something. And if you look at it, it's almost like it's Kung Fu. The position of the person, if you see it clearly, they're kind of knelt down with one leg is kind of straight, the other one is bent. And he's in a position where he's just swung his arms or her arms open and it caused the lightning effect to come out and then kind of go and rip towards the other building. And this is the thing. This is all in a children's playground, indoor playground, where they get to go and do lots of jumping and bouncy houses and all that stuff. This is what's on the walls in that children's playground. And I saw that I'm like, that is so unnecessary. There, that shouldn't be in that place, but that's what's there. So no one can tell me that there's not a big, massive open door. Children come to play, have fun. But spiritually speaking, there's something entering them. That's what I'm convinced of. So this is what we see. Then of course we have once again, Harry Potter. Um, the, the, as it says right there, I solemnly swear that I am up to no good. So clearly they're up to no good and that's not something that you want to be a partaking in. But Harry Potter says, yeah, go ahead and get this bag because that's what I saw. Somebody was wearing the bag and I just took the picture of the bag. We need to stay away from these things, brothers and sisters. Uh, Walt Disney, the entire organization of Walt Disney is evil. So whether it's Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, anything that comes from Walt Disney, it is evil. Do your homework and you'll find out it is evil. Um, this book, I actually saw it and I was just like, wow, deep. So um, it says there, once upon a river. Some say the river drowned her. Some say it brought her back to life. But clearly, it says it's magical, dazzling, beguiling. And that little river, which is also representative of like a snake, and is also representative as if it was like in a garden of Eden type. So it's in a garden. There, do We know that if you read the Bible, you see that the Garden of Eden was in the center of four different rivers. So this is talking about like, as if it's saying, you know, the serpent that came into the rivers. Some say that it drowned her, some say it brought it back to life. But the open door is to draw people that want to read these fantasy things. And when they read them, we don't know what kind of effect it has over their life. But definitely there's something there. So we need to be mindful of it. Now, anytime you see anything to do with a snake, you should be thinking, go the other direction. <laughs> snake charmer. Oh, dear. That's all I'm going to say. Snake charmer. It's not good. Not good at all. Next. <laughs> Look once again. We've got this skull and bones. We've got like an amulet ring. You, you can see there's, um, for whatever reason, this guy's got a Jesus Peace bracelet. Why would you have a, a Jesus Peace bracelet? And then you got skull and bones and this, um, this um, whatever ring with whatever that thing is in the middle of it. And they even have the ring there with a little cross on it. It's a mixed bag. And clearly, that can't all be good. It cannot all be good. So this is obviously, I don't even know fully what this picture is saying, but it's definitely um, 
kind of showing that this is what we are into. And whether he's offering it to you or taking it from you, this is what they're into. So we need to be mindful of these things. Amen. Ah, moving forward, we have this guy. I tried to just take his hat. He's wearing the Reaper crew. Why would he want to have the Reaper crew on his head? Uh, I mean, it might be subtle, but why do they have to put those words on a hat to put it on somebody's head? Not good. Uh, moving forward, Depeche Mode, if you're in your 30s or 40s, or maybe younger, you'd still know them, but they were a big group in the 80s. And clearly, the, the sign there says spirits in the forest not good at all so these spirits they're not clean spirits i'm sure of that these things we have to take in, 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 in we have to be mindful of them and um of course we have here the sign of gucci i was uh, coming from a job and i saw this thing with gucci and i was just like no way so this is obviously gucci it's a it's an ad for Gucci. Now, why is a Gucci advertisement showing three people around the Ouija board, or sorry, not a Ouija board, but a crystal ball? And you can see the woman on the left. Clearly, she's probably the one that's leading the show. And these two on the middle and on the right have come to visit, and they're probably asking questions and seeking wisdom and knowledge and insight. And so why would Gucci have a crystal ball which represents evil in it? These are the kind of things that we need to kind of stop and be aware of it and then say, okay, is that what Gucci is up to? Because if so, you might not want to actually endorse Gucci. We need to be aware of these things. Um, coming really close to the end now is... Um, um, Trap star. The whole idea of trap star. When I seen it, I was just like, no way. Um, it says it all just in the name. We need to be mindful of it. But not only that. Um, look at what he's wearing. He's wearing Beats by Dre. Him and this other picture, they're wearing Beats by Dre headphones. Now, for me, who is born and raised into hip hop, I've listened to most of Dr. Dre's music in the 90s, big follower, big fan, but yet when he came up with these headphones in my spirit, I didn't even think I was a Christian yet, in my spirit, I never felt any peace to want to have his headphones. And one day, many years ago, um, Lorna and I, Lorna and I, we were, we were on the train and she seen somebody wearing the headphones and she didn't know that it was Beats by Dre and she was like look those headphones actually have a six on it and I was like that's not a six it's a B for Beats by Dre but she's like but it looks like a six and I actually have to take another look and say you know what you're right and when I really thought about it Beats by Dre headphones they have a six on each side of the ears and I'm pretty sure most if not all of the headphones they have another B or a six up on the top of the headphones people that's basic math six 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 we need to be aware of these things I personally would never purchase a pair of Beats by Dre and even if somebody got them for me I would exchange them for something else. I would never wear them. I don't care what kind of good quality that they have to give. I don't want it. So we need to really be mindful of these things. And then so that kind of closes it except for these second last two that I just want to quickly briefly touch on. This one here, uh, this show, never watched it, but obviously with a title like A Discovery of Witches, we don't really need to go too deep into it because you can kind of see it is what it is. And the last one that I wanted to touch on was just last week. There's a whole big hoopla about this rapper, um, Little Nas X, who's actually endorsing the pair of Nikes, which have the 666 on them. I mean, it even has... Um, 
the Star of David on it. It has Luke 10, 18 on it. If you don't know what Luke 10, 18 it is, the scripture that says, I saw, when Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. I mean, it's just so demonic. Now, they only made 666 pairs of this shoe. Apparently, it has human blood in it. And that's the reason why Nike ended up trying to recall all of the shoes. But obviously, people that want these shoes, once they've got them, they're not going to want to give it back. And the shoe costs a thousand dollars US, which is like seven, eight hundred pounds. But if people purchase these things, they're glorifying it. They're not wanting to take it back. They got it because they probably worship Satan and they're like, these are the best shoes. So it's just heartbreaking to know just how much evil is actually circulating in the world. So we wanted to go through these. Um, I pray that you will be blessed by them. I pray that you will truly seek the Lord to be free from the, the conditioning power that we are faced in this world with so many things that are around us. We need to be set free. We need to call on the Lord. So please let us desperately call on him and ask him to help us so that we would not be trapped by these things that are in this world. Amen. So we desperately need to keep hearing these types of messages so that these things can sink deep into our minds and that we can live out 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3 to 7, which says, we put no obstruction in anyone's path so that the ministry will not be discredited, but we commend ourselves in every way as servants of God, in great endurance, in sufferings, in hardships, in distresses, in beatings, in imprisonments, in riots, in labors, in sleepless nights, in hunger, in purity and sincerity, in knowledge and spiritual insight, in patience, in kindness, in the Holy Spirit, in genuine love, in speaking the word of truth, in the power of God, and by the weapons of righteousness for the right hand, like holding the sword to attack, and for the left, like holding the shield to defend. Amen. So please do keep these in mind. Stay looking at things differently. Learn from the fact that we are living in a world that tells us one thing, but not Nagasa. <laughs> so please um, just educate yourself. Look into these things that I've mentioned. Go and watch Truth Unedited um, in that little playlist that he has on the symbols. Please educate yourself and let's let's no longer be um, ignorant because the word of God tells us that his people, they perish for lack of knowledge. So let us not be ignorant. Let us have the knowledge that will help us to move forward. And by the grace of God, we will see you next week on our regular live, sh live streaming. And um, yeah, we'll just go from there. So please stay blessed, stay tuned, be with the Lord, and we will see you next week. John Mark, serving the Lord, signing out once again, and I'll see you later. Amen. Oh, of course, of